Hi right, guys and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. My name is James and today we're going to go ahead and sit down and talk to you guys about the latest news in regards to Reading Football Club. Now, I think I recorded on Tuesday and Wednesday, uploaded two different videos uh, and I said I didn't really want to make another video uh, off of Friday if wages weren't paid. Well, wages were paid so we have got a positive there that Reading Football Club did manage to pay their wages on time for September so the looming points deduction will not go ahead uh, as we actually managed to pay our staff on time but big things did come out today uh, as there was a article done by The Athletic um, which came out today more importantly uh, mainly came from Philip Buckingham uh, and it was a real big insight into Reading Football Club. Now, a lot of people already know a lot of the stuff about Reading, myself included, and probably a lot of you fans as well will know about kind of what's been going on behind the scenes at Reading, but everything was put into one place. It was kind of there to give the national uh, media and kind of audience of English football kind of the insight as to what's been going on at Reading Football Club. Now, I've got to say, if you haven't read the article yourself, I would go ahead and do it. It's £1 right now uh, per month for the next year to sign up to the Athletic. In my opinion, uh, it's definitely worth it. It is a service that I use myself uh, for news quite a bit. But the title of the article is Reading's Desperate Plight, 191 million losses, 16 points docked and a silent owner. Now, we're not going to go through the whole article, as I think that would do injustice and would be wrong to the writers and the service as well that the uh, Athletic produced, but we will go through some of the main points. Like, for example, it was confirmed that Reading's monthly wage bill at the moment is around £700,000, uh, and we were dependent on a short-term loan last month from Select Car Leasing. Now, Select Car did decline to comment uh, on the official like whether or not we did do it um, but it has been confirmed that select car leasing were the people that did pay the wages last month so after we went ahead and said we weren't sure whether it did it has been confirmed uh, that that is the case another thing that came out was that reading last season were paying liam moore george puskas lucas Schwell, and yakumete a combined £125,000 per week between just the four of them absolutely ridiculous that them four players and if we're being completely honest two players that were just a waste of time for the last two seasons Lucas Schwell who did have good games but last season was a waste and Yaku Mete, who again was probably a decent player before he had his injury strikes a combined 125 grand when you break down that money it is absolutely ludicrous that that much money was being paid to four players only in the championship just could not believe that when that came out. It was confirmed as well that Charlie Savage does have a sell-on clause. It was a 50% sell-on clause to Manchester United. We didn't pay a fee for him, but 50% is a lot of money. Uh, that is going to be confirmed that will go to Manchester United when Charlie Savage eventually moves on. Another thing that ties in two transfers is that it's confirmed that Reading potentially may have to sell players before January to just raise funds so they'll be able to function as a football club. And it may be below market value uh, and we'll be able to keep them till January and then they disappear. Again, it shouldn't be happening. I mean, there was rumours of Charlie Savage going to Ajax and FC Twente. They were looking at him. Kalen Vickers and Tyler Bindham being reportedly uh, looked at by Arsenal. But the fact that this is even a possibility that Reading may end up selling players now and in October and November and December and then they leave in January just to get through and survive as a club, it's absolutely diabolical. I mean, today you had statements as well from Scumthorpe and from Sheffield Wednesday where owners are confirming they're not going to be putting money into the club anymore. There needs to be new rules around protection of football clubs, in my opinion, whether that's confirming 50% fan-based ownership or 49% or something where fan ownership is involved so they guarantee clubs don't go under. There needs to be some sort of clause or contract in there where it's not fair to the football fans. It's the fans that suffer, not the owners. They don't care at the end of the day. And that's just shown, really, by the next piece of news that came out in the article is that Dai Young values Reading in the region of 70 to 80 million pounds. Any takeover would include ownership of the stadium and Bearwood Park as well. But again, so much money to buy this football club. It's ridiculous that much. Like, I understand, I understand it from his perspective, but at the same time, I don't. 
it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money that they're uh, they're trying to get out. And for a League One club, I don't believe that would happen at all. Now he's offer he's demanding seventy to eighty million. But Dae Yong Pang, the CEO of Reading Football Club, has not been seen in the last four months. Staff are frustrated that they're getting most of their updates via the media and that one member of the staff have described the working environment as a car crash. Kia Yukarapijin, he's the agent that Reading fans know notoriously and do not like at all. His influence has obviously gone over the last six months at Reading Football Club, but he is the only person that Reading are able to get in contact with to get through to Dai Young, which is, I do not understand. I do not understand if that how that's even a possibility, that this agent has got this influence where now we need him to stick around because he's the only way that we're able to talk to the owner. It's, I don't understand. Do not understand at all. Now, another piece of news came out today from Reading Football Club. We made an official statement uh, today. Uh, It was a statement titled Embargo Status and Proposed Sale of the Club. Now, obviously, last month or just before the season started, uh, Reading obviously was speaking about how they want new major investments uh, in the club from outside sources. But today, uh, they obviously confirmed that we are under a transfer embargo uh, due to obviously not paying our HMRC tax bill, which had a deadline of today. They also said that the club continues to suffer significant cash flow issues and in striving to establish sources of stable external investment, we can confirm that there has been significant interest from a number of parties seeking involvement in the club. Discussions and due diligence processes with a number of these potential investors continue to apace. Apace, sorry. Our owner, Mr. Dai, is openly inviting further credible offers of interest and declarations of intent from parties eager to pursue a potential sale of the club. Now, in my opinion, I think that this has only been released out to the public because they know what's going to be happening tomorrow. They know that something big and the protests and that are going to be happening tomorrow, but I feel like this has only come because they feel like potentially it may negate the impact and the kind of like how big the protests are going to be if anything i think it's just fueled the fire even more it's been confirmed that die young is open now to sell the football club rumors that were coming out was that he was never going to even think about selling it before we've now moved on to he's open to selling it redbird capital need to get in there as soon as possible and buy this football club please think about it one of the best academies in the country, got young, good assets, you got a director of football who clearly knows what he's doing. You know, it's a good opportunity there to uh, make a lot of money off this football club, in my opinion. There's a lot of debts, but I think eventually Reading will be able to uh, repay them debts. But look, realistically, it's a scary time right now. People were talking about, oh, I don't know if we're going to fight relegation. In my opinion, I don't know if we're going to fight being a football club much longer it's it's a scary time and the statements today just kind of fully backs them scary statements the amount of money that this man has put into the football club is careless the money that he's invested is just in all in the wrong places it's careless and look he doesn't have a clue let's be honest there's multiple confirmations that he doesn't speak barely any english he needs a translator there he doesn't really know much about the squad or about football in general so it's really difficult it's really hard to really put into words where we are going to be at the end of the season look i know i spoke about a little bit but scunthorpe my biggest uh my biggest um i don't know prayers go out to you that uh, you have a football club come soon read the article on the athletic about scunthorpe and it's sickening really that some people see these football clubs as just a game it's just a game to them and realistically this is people's lives. It's people's lives at the end of the day. The staff, behind the scenes, not just the players and the fans. The fan, like, let's be honest, football gets you out there, right? Gets you out there. Me and the missus love going every week. It's something to get away from everything. Where are we going to go from here? Let's hope Reading Football Club survive. Listen, that's going to be it for this video today, guys. Obviously, potential sale coming soon, we hope. And uh, yeah, let's hope we get three points tomorrow. That's going to be it for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I've been James. We'll see you all tomorrow for a review of the Burton Albion game. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.